This is the video of developmental biology where we will be discussing about vulval development in Cynorhabditis elegans or simply C. elegans. Before we get to the developmental part, first of all we will see what this vulva is when it is getting developed. The vulva is hermaphrodite specific ectodermal organ and it develops post embryonically. It connects internal reproductive system with the external environment. Now we see it has got two major functions. First of all it is required for mating as males inject sperm through it. Do not get confused here because the vulva containing C. elegans is hermaphrodite organism. But still in some cases the cross fertilization is seen where this vulva is required so that males are able to inject sperm through it. And the other important function is that it is required for deposition of embryo after internal fertilization. So these are the main two functions of vulva. As we have already stated that vulva develops post embryonically through morphogenesis. But what causes it to develop post embryonically? In their early development we see C. elegans are male. But later on in the developmental process most of the C. elegans transform into female also. Plus they also retain the male organs. Thus we call them hermaphrodite organisms at that time. And it's in these organisms where vulva is needed for the above mentioned functions. So in hermaphrodite species we will see this vulval development. Now let's get into the detail. The vulva forms during L3 larval stage of development. And this vulva forms from VPCs that's vulval precursor cells that are 6 in number. And furthermore these VPCs are under the control of anchor cell which signals the VPCs via inductive signaling. And these 6 vulval precursor cells are also referred as equivalence group. Equivalence group refers to a set of unspecified cells that have same developmental potential which means all cells have same developmental capability to develop into any organ or tissue. But these cells achieve different or various paths via cell induction and lateral inhibition. Now let's have a look at this diagram showing the structure of C. elegans having gonad shown in the red color. Beneath the gonad we have anchor cell shown in the blue color. And under the close proximity of anchor cell we have 6 vulval precursor cells as shown in the green color here. If we zoom into the structure then we see it has got one anchor cell and the closest vulval precursor cell to the anchor cell is denoted as P6P cell. On its left it has P5P cell and on the right of P6P it has got P7P cell. And then it has three outer cells. On the right of P7P it has P8P vulval precursor cell and looking at the left side of it it has got P4P and P3P cells as shown in the diagram. These six cells are vulval precursor cells and form the equivalence group as we have already discussed what equivalence group is. Now we have to see which cell is going to become vulval cell and which cell is going to become hypodermous. And this all depends upon the inductive signal from the anchor cell. The anchor cell signals the VPCs through a molecule called a LIN3 protein which is like EGF. But this LIN3 protein is not received equally by all vulval precursor cells. As you can see in this diagram, the small small dots denotes the LIN3 concentration. We can see the P6P precursor cell receives the most of LIN3 protein, whereas the nearby cells receives the less concentration, and the outer cells receive very low concentration, or we can say negligible concentration. Before we go into the detail, it must be noted that not only LIN3 contributes to the fate of cells, but C. elegans has got another signaling molecule called a LIN12 molecule, which also contributes to the fate of cells via lateral inhibition, which we will see later on in this video how this lateral inhibition works in. VPCs which receives the highest concentration of LIN3 adopts to become 1 degree precursor cell. While as VPCs which receives the less concentration of LIN3 protein adopts to become 2 degree precursor cells. While as the VPCs which do not receive or receive with negligible concentration of LIN3 adopts to become 3 degree cells. Now let's see how this inductive signal and later signal chooses the fate of vulval precursor cells. A strong inductive signal from the anchor cell causes the neighboring VPC that's P6P cell to activate the LET23 pathway which signals through MAPK protein. And through this activation of LET23 pathway, the cell which receives the highest concentration of LIN3 protein adopts to become 1 degree precursor cell. And the adjacent cells receives the lateral signal, 
which inhibits the transduction of weaker inductive signal and leads to the cell adopting to 2 degree cell fate. Other cells that is P3P, P4P and P8P cells which do not receive any signals adopt the 3 degree fate. Now it must be noted that 1 degree VPCs are being made under LIN3 inductive signal but how this lateral inhibition signal is being activated. The activation of LED23 pathway by LIN3 in 1 degree vulval precursor cells leads to activation of MAPK in P6P cell as stated earlier. And this P6P cell initiates the lateral signal towards the nearby cells what we call as lateral inhibition. And this lateral inhibition activates the LIN12 protein in adjacent cells to the left and right. So at the end we can say two combining signals determines the fate of cells. Inductive signal determines the fate of P6P cell and the lateral signal determines the fate of adjacent cells that is P5P and P7P. So till now this is the signaling through lateral inhibition and inductive signaling. Then after that P6P cell that is the one degree precursor cell divides into central vulval cells while a 2 degree VPCs divides into lateral vulval cells and the cells which do not receive any inductive or lateral signal that are 3 degree cells will divide into hypodermis. Of those vulval cells it has 8 central cells and 14 lateral cells thus in total it has got 22 vulval cells. Now let's discuss some conditions or cases for the presence and absence of inductive and lateral signals. If anchor cell is destroyed, at that time there will not be any inductive signal in the form of LIN3 protein, which means the VPCs will not develop into vulval cells. Rather, all VPCs will develop into hypodermis. Second condition is that if only three cells, that's one degree and two degree vulval precursor cells are destroyed, then at that time the outer cells, which under normal conditions develops into hypodermis, but here at that time these outer VPCs will develop into vulval cells. So this is all about vulval development of C elegans, the signaling through inductive signaling and lateral inhibition. In the next video we will be discussing about signaling pathway of vulval development. So this is all about vulval development in C elegans. I hope you like the video. If you like it give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe this channel. Thanks.